Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the new album from Hunter Hayes, titled Storyline. But first, a bit of an odd question here. How much does age matter in the making of music? Well, on the surface, it shouldn't matter at all. There have been plenty of young men and women with tons of talent who have managed to impress people no matter how old they are. Hell, take a look at Michael Jackson back when he was with the Jackson 5. But let's change the question slightly. How much does age matter in country music? Because, like it or not, most country is grounded in more mature subject matter, if not just in history and tradition. Neo-traditional country in particular, it's rooted in that spirit that tends to demand an older voice to more effectively deliver it. Because, let's face it, most young country stars aren't incredibly interested in the past. But you know what, even bro country acts who just want to talk about trucks, women, and drinking, they do almost require their audience to be at least as old to buy beer to at least relate with the situations that they would describe in their songs. As such, you don't really tend to find many convincing teenage stars in country music, especially in comparison with other genres like pop, hip-hop, or punk music. Now enter Hunter Hayes, who signed on with, as a songwriter with incredible talent with Universal in 2008, when he was just 17. He got to start touring with Taylor Swift and Rascal Flatts before dropping his solo, self-titled debut album. And I'll admit right now, I didn't care for that record. I thought the production was incredibly processed, the songwriting was not particularly inspired, and despite his very real talent and composition, the album just felt kind of interchangeable and bland to me. A few snarkier critics branded him as the country version of Justin Bieber, but you know what? Given Bieber's musical evolution over the past year and a bit, that always struck me as a little unfair. And thus, I vowed to give Hunter Hayes a second chance with his newest album, Storyline. How'd that end up going? Well, I'll be completely blunt here. I went into this album just expecting to thrash it. Yeah, I know it's unfair. I admit that, but after I found his first album to be forgettable, I was expecting to write this album off and just give it one of my characteristically harsh reviews. But after listening to this album multiple times, I've had a bit of a change of heart here because really, I want to like Storyline by Hunter Hayes a lot more than I do. But look, there's a, just a few major problems that are kind of hard to overlook on this album. So no matter how hard I really want to like this record, it just, it's not clicking with me as much as I want it to. So okay, let's start with the element that I liked the most. The instrumentation and the production. Going in, I was expecting pop country with all the plucky, vibrant guitars and the complete lack of grit that you would expect in this subgenre. And you know what? That's exactly what I got. What was surprising was how many genuinely good melodies that I did find on this album. Some decent guitar solos and enough in the two instrumental vignettes on this record to consider Hunter Hayes a pretty damn talented composer. What I liked most about this was his approach to composition because most of these melodies, they're not all that intricate or far removed from typical neo-traditional country, but with a well-chosen crisp electric guitar tone and some solid instrumental variety with some of the strings and accordion that crop up, he was able to make some of the simplicity in the melodies really make it work for them. That said, this album's closing track bears a very striking resemblance to I Won't Give Up by Jason Mraz, a song I absolutely loathe. And if that song is released as a single, there's probably going to be grounds for lawsuits in Hunter Hayes' future, just a warning there. But you know what, putting that aside, I was also surprised how much I liked a lot of the songwriting too. From a very technical standpoint, Hunter Hayes is a solid songwriter, with his poetry having a lot of real, natural flow, and occasional snippets of pretty decent nuance. Not a lot of country texture or description in his lyrics, but you know what, they're very effective for charming his target audience with sweet, generally agreeable love songs. And indeed, Hunter Hayes is in his best element when he's singing about those sorts of love songs, which makes the two opening tracks, Wild Card and the title track, pretty damn effective as just straightforward, upbeat, heartfelt love songs. Granted, it helps that the title track was co-written by Eric Posley, who's just continuing to show himself as one of the best new country songwriters in the business right now, but you know what? I'll give Hunter Hayes credit where it's due. Now, that's not saying there aren't a few songwriting issues, though. It might be a little bit of a nitpick here, but when Hunter Hayes spends so much of his song Tattoo singing about how some girl's name looks so good next to his, and then never names 
names the girl in question, you can just tell it's a wish fulfillment song for his young female fan base. Secret Love falls into the exact same category. We never get any reasons why their love needs to be kept a secret, but you know what, I guess I can understand the whole thrill of it all. And while I get the vague anti-bullying consolation message of Invisible, but at the same time, the song goes for vague sympathy and it feels a little bit pandering to me, and thus doesn't quite feel as real or visceral as a song like, say, Eminem, Sing For A Moment, a song I find a lot more effective. Indeed, this leads to my biggest issue with Hunter Hayes. As a performer, I get very little out of the guy. He's a solid singer and he does have charisma, but not a lot of emotional range. You can always hear him straining to push for rougher, more emotional notes in his delivery, and combined with the real lack of texture in his voice, I just keep wondering in the back of my mind if his songs would resonate with me more powerfully if coming from a more interesting, textured vocalist. And what's worse is that it renders a lot of his breakup songs a little hard to take seriously. Songs like You Think You Know Somebody and Nothing Like Starting over, they try to have a real undercurrent of anger and it isn't quite convincing coming from Hunter Hayes. And that's saying nothing about the worst track on this album, If It's Just Me, where Hayes tries to present all manner of things that he might be doing wrong in this relationship and that he's fully prepared to walk away from the relationship and leave this girl in the past, but since he's always framing the song as a question using the word if, it comes across that he doesn't believe he's the problem at all in this relationship, and if he does, he's just gonna massively guilt trip the girl in question along the way. And look, that's a really poor fit for Hunter Hayes, as cattiness just doesn't fit his voice whatsoever. In fact, it seems like his voice seems to be consistently the biggest problem in all these songs. But why? And then I heard the song Flashlight, and I got my answer. It's a song about Hunter Hayes always knowing that there's a higher light that shines down on him, a touch of the divine, and oh, hi Jesus! And then it completely made sense to me. Hunter Hayes has the voice of a modern Christian rock act just waiting to happen. Smooth, clean, perfectly suited to hymns and songs about love and God and Jesus and conveying not the slightest iota of convincing drama in his songs. Now look, the last time I talked about a Christian leaning act was Switchfoot, and honestly, I see a lot of the same similarities between Hunter Hayes and that band. And while I think Hunter Hayes is a much more, is a much better composer, or at least a little bit more of an interesting songwriter, they both have the same problem in that there's little texture in their delivery and their lyrics, and neither of them are very much very capable of deeper, dramatic material material, at least for me. And look, some of that might just come naturally with age and more experience. It might come with time, but as it is, I don't get a lot of that deeper drama from this album. Now, granted, I'm not part of the demographic that loves Hunter Hayes, and if you're a part of that fame base, you'll probably like this album because it is better than his first record. I'll admit that, but at the same time, Hunter Hayes comes across as a very talented performer who's limiting his market by writing material solely for that explicit fan base. And even by that standard, the breakup songs on this record, with the single exception of When Did You Stop Loving Me, they really come across as unflattering to him. And that really does frustrate me here because I think with a little bit more time and a little bit more experimentation, I could really come to like Hunter Hayes as a singer and performer. As it is, this album is decent, but nothing that blew me away outside of the title track, but as I said, that was co-written with Eric Posley. What are you gonna expect there? So I'm giving this album a six out of 10, at least for me, as I said. If you're a fan or you're in the target demographic, you're gonna love Hunter Hayes' storyline, no doubt about it. If you're not either of those things though, like me, well, it's worth a listen, but you know what? I'll put money on Hunter Hayes going to Christian rock within a decade. You can probably count on that. <sighs> so yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or if there's any other albums coming out that you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a listen. So until then, I'm Mark, you've been watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.